Pro-Revenge, I left behind a dead man switch in the company workflow when I sensed I was about to be bullied into quitting. First of all, the story is a bit older, but I will keep stuff rather ambiguous at times just for my own safety. I don't know how much my company can find out. I hope I can put it into words so everyone understands, especially as English is not my first language. Also, there will be a TLDR at the bottom. Also, also, there are some Google translations in this, so please be merciful. So, let's get started. I started working in logistics at a company that, that builds things. That was just as COVID was starting, actually. When I started, we were five people in the team, but one of the guys quit soon after. This is important because it was a very good insight into how my department operates when they don't need or want a certain someone around. They will not outright fire you, since then they have to pay you a severance. But instead, they will bully you into quitting. I saw pretty much the whole package, excluding them from meetings and important events, putting them down in public, lecturing them, never noticing good work done, but always making sure everyone knows about work that is poorly done. Drowning someone in work and then berating them when they inevitably can't keep up. It was outright childish at times. I didn't register it at the time, but it was a really valuable lesson for later. I was put in charge of managing our overseas suppliers, among other things. About half of our material came from overseas, most of that from China. While it seems like a big task for someone new, it wasn't done out of malice. Genuinely, everyone believed we were going to get a guy in China for the Chinese supplies, then I'd be left for the handful of others. It seemed fair, but we never got that guy for China, and I was left with all overseas suppliers. Another important thing is that just in this project, the company had decided to change the workflow for overseas suppliers. This is because due to COVID, the price of shipping containers had exploded. To explain it as simply as, previously the suppliers were responsible for filling our containers and bringing them to the harbor, wherever. We were responsible for picking them up from the harbor and bringing them to us. However, due to demands and many other things, sometimes we just needed two or three pallets of parts where a dozen or more could fit inside a container. So we were shipping a lot of air. The new workflow would have the suppliers bring the parts to an external warehouse, one in the US, one in China. Then we would load them into containers to get the containers as full as possible and then bring them to the harbor and then into our plant. This way we needed to rent far fewer containers. This complicated things because it erased the direct contact from us to the suppliers. And there was no official method how we were going to keep in contact with suppliers, tell them how many parts we need, how to package them, if there were any changes requested, etc. During that time, I was left mostly alone to deal with it, and I set up a system with Excel. It was mostly manual, rather simple, but it worked well. It worked so well that one of the suits even chatted with me about it for a bit, since he wanted to make it a standard in future projects. And also, this is very important. I was the only person who actually knew all our overseas suppliers and their contacts. Some of you might be able to tell where this story is going already. So, during that entire time, nobody had actually bothered to ask me to explain to them how my system worked and where I kept track of all the supplier contacts. All of this data was hidden on like slide 800 of some Excel file I had saved in a folder titled Part Pictures, which was otherwise filled with pictures of parts. Now, moving as COVID began dying down, the department, for whatever reason, decided they don't need me anymore. I have theories, but nothing certain, so I will just leave it at that. I pretty much saw precisely the same thing go down as I had seen with that one guy who had left shortly after I started. All the bullying. I thought to myself at first that if I pull through and keep doing a good job, and I believe I did a good job, they would eventually cool down. But they didn't. After two months of that, I said F it and decided to just sit out and endure until the Christmas bonus we get every year and then hand in my notice. And also, I just delayed teaching anyone how my system worked until I was gone. And that is pretty much how it happened. For my own future employment, I actually lucked out. One of the local suppliers I was managing had a really chill guy as managing director. I gave him a call, explained I was about to be unemployed, asked if they needed staff. He then called me into an interview we talked about anime for an hour, while his HR lady looked confused about what Attack on Titan was, and he told me I can come in the moment I am done with my then-current job. 
Back on topic. A month into working at my new job, I got a call from my old job. The department manager, to his credit, he was always a reasonable guy. He told me in plain words that they have no idea where TF to even start with the Chinese suppliers. He then offered me my old job back with a very respectable pay increase. I explained that I already had a new job. Two days later, I got another call where the same manager offered me many times my monthly salary just to come in for one week and instruct my old team and how my process functioned, introduce them to all the contacts, etc. I told him I refused because of the way I had been treated by them when I worked there. He said that he understood and wished me luck at my new job and hung up. The reason I'm writing this story this week, I randomly got in touch with some of the people in the transport department from my old job. They mentioned that in the now 10 months since I left, the logistics department racked up eight-figure losses due to wrong deliveries, over- and under-deliveries, outdated parts, some suppliers canceling their contracts, and new suppliers needing to be sourced, etc. And all the blame for that fell on my old team. My new job is fine. It's not the best job, but I get to travel a lot and get nice bonuses for it. My boss isn't around much since he married. I do sometimes regret not taking that offer for a week as an instructor. So yeah, hope you all enjoyed the read. TLDR, company put me in charge of managing overseas suppliers, unintentionally making me the only guy who knew the suppliers and knew the system I had created to exchange data with them. When my company started bullying me into quitting, I avoided instructing anyone from my team in how my system worked, leading to them asking me to come back after I quit and then racking up eight-figure losses after I refused to come back. My dad's company had an older guy who knew how to program in COBOL. He helped maintain some ancient software they used to manage electrical infrastructure. This was in about 2000. They decided they didn't want to pay some old developer so much money, so they made him take retirement. Fast forward three weeks, and they have multiple bugs causing huge issues and not one person qualified to fix them. They offer to take him back, and he says no, but he will offer them his services as a contractor at about seven times the money he was making previously. So they ended up paying this guy to come back for about two years while they deprecated the old system and put in a new one costing them the equivalent of more than a decade of his old salary. Eight figures is pro. All these posts where people be about how the revenge has to be such and such to be on the sub, blah, 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 not on this one. It does sound like much. It definitely is much for the department, but for the company, the eight figures really isn't game changing. I do like to imagine the dressing down my old team got. Well, if they are a public traded company, then that loss will hurt investors. Bad growth means fewer willing to invest and current investors pulling out. Nah, an eight-figure loss can be hidden, misrepresented, or excused away easily enough if you're a nine or 10-figure company. I mean, heads will roll internally, but from an outside investor's perspective, a logistics division in a manufacturer losing money during COVID is not even remotely notable at this point. Hope you all enjoyed this story. Once again, I'm always open to criticism. Anything you guys can tell me will help. Let me know what you guys thought of the story in the comments and share any stories you guys might have as well. The link to the original post, as always, will be in the description and make sure to follow for new videos every day.